and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today I'm reviewing 365 Days of Art by Lorna Scobie, a London-based illustrator and creator of the colouring books Jungle Paradise and Birds of Paradise. This book isn't a colouring book but rather an art journal encouraging you to embark on a small creative project every day for a year. It includes 365 different art prompts so it's quite similar to other art journals but it doesn't request you to wreck or rip it like some others do. Now I'm a massive lover of art journals as you can see from just a selection of mine here but I was rather fed up of prompts that required me to destroy the book in some way or those that were too vague and left to interpretation so Lorna's book has been a great alternative and to be honest I haven't put it down since I've received it. Now I know you're supposed to do one page a day but I couldn't help but whiz through the first 30 odd prompts so you're going to be seeing some of the book completed in this video. Physically the book is 8.5 by 6 inches, it has an aqua blue cover with ink splotches all over it and it's over an inch thick so it's pretty weighty to hold. All the pages are finished in black around the edges which I think is really funky but all the pages are in fact white. So on opening here, we have an introduction from Lorna explaining the purpose of the book, where she talks a bit about how daunting it can be to put pencil to a blank sheet of paper, especially if, like me, you're not an artist. So she's decided to start a lot of the prompts off for you, in case you just don't know where to begin. You're not forced to actually complete the book in order, and it's not essential that you do something in it every single day, but there is you know, the option there when you want something small and artsy to just relax and calm yourself down with. So here is a list of numbers that you can mark off each activity as you do it. As you can see, I've already marked off quite a few and this patchwork effect is coming on nicely. There's then a section about different materials that you can use like pens, pencils, paints and coloured papers with a few little tips on each of them. And then the activities begin. So this first page was to create a pattern, which I did with Halloween colours. And even though lines were already there, I still managed to mess up the pattern plenty of times. And you'll see as we go through that I cannot draw a straight line with a ruler. So there's definitely going to be lots of mess ups in my book. This second one was to turn paint splodges into animals. So the splodge shapes were already there and I just added faces and features to them. The next task was to draw a skyline. You could have drawn one out of the window or something that you see on your way to work, anything like that, but I decided to do this absolute masterpiece of some London landmarks. Picasso, eat your heart out. So this page asked for squatches, squatches? swatches of colour. So I used everything from pens to pastels and I had to cover it with tape so that it didn't transfer to the next page. Uh, which is to colour fruits in unusual colours, like this blue banana and purple pear. On this one, there were already a few fish present on the page and I had to complete the shoal. So I did some finger painting for the main body of the fish and then added jelly roll pen details to them when they were dry. Here I had to draw someone from memory, so I tried to draw my little sister and I can assure you this looks absolutely nothing like her. Uh, I then drew a collection of vegetables and then added a feathery texture to this parrot. I haven't done this one yet, but as you can see, I have attempted this facial features challenge. And then I added some leaves and fruit to this tree. Now this page was to fill in the white circles with colour and try and make palettes and see how each colour looks on the background strip. This one was drawing different flowers and this one was to draw or stick a pattern that inspires you. So I found this paper cut of a helix pattern that I really like. This page is to practice calligraphy strokes with a brush pen and um, basically just learn the basic strokes of calligraphy and this one was to fill the page with scribbles. I then coloured these fish in and created this rose gold and pink wallpaper, sort of geometrical design. On this one I took inspiration from the Netflix programme Stranger Things uh, to design these fairy lights with the alphabet. If you haven't seen that then you won't know what it's about but it's part of a programme. And then I chose pasta as my favourite simple thing to eat and obviously did it in a pasta style. So here I tried to make a circular pattern of coloured dots and then I coloured these stripes black and white like a sort of barcode. On this page I filled in all the squares with different Zentangle inspired patterns and here I coloured a beach and a park on either side of this stream and that was the only thing that was on the page to start with. 
I then continued these two patterns in warm colours and designed these t-shirts based on famous logos and trends like the tie-dye. Here I had to put colours together to see how they work with each other. I particularly like this emerald green and bright red combo. This one I haven't quite completed yet. Here I had to draw my desk where I'm talking to you from right now and then I added leaves to these bare trees. This one was to fill in the page with star shapes and this one to continue practicing that calligraphy with the brush strokes we learned earlier. And that's it so far. So I've still got over 350 prompts left to do and I really can't wait to carry on. I'm just gonna do a quick flip through of the book while I'm speaking so that you can see how some of the pages look when you first get the book. If you can uh, want to see any of these in more detail, you can pause this video and have a better look. So the paper is a decent thickness, although any time that you push down hard with water-based pens, they are gonna bleed through onto the reverse side. Now, seeing as this is a double-sided book, you will have to be careful that you don't leave impressions on the pages that you've already done. For example, my coloured pencil work in this book has transferred to the facing page when I've been pressing hard on the page in front. So I now use bits of scrap paper between each of the pages to combat this. The binding is really strongly sewn, so there's been no problems with any pages falling out, um, even though I've manipulated the book quite roughly when doing some of the activities. Basically, I think if you love to colour, then you might like to use those skills on some of these activities. It makes a nice change to do a bit of drawing as well as colouring. Um, and the prompts aren't too difficult or demanding at all. Anybody can fill this book in. So the book itself is released on the 17th and the 19th of October in the US and the UK respectively. Links are included in the description for you to get your pre-orders in. You can also get it on the book depository if you live anywhere else in the world. Now what might surprise you most is the absolute bargain price this book is selling for. I would have expected and happily paid £15 for a book with this amount of content, but it's currently on Amazon UK for just £8.40. Without a doubt, that is an incredible price when you think about the amount of work that Lorna's put into this book uh, and the amount of projects and hours that you're going to get out of the book as well. So that is probably about half, maybe not, yeah, probably about half of the pages. Uh, as you can see, there's still loads and loads to go. I really hope you've enjoyed this review, even though it's not a colouring book. Um, if you have, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.